All right, so I always want to know, did you guys watch each other's season? And were you like, wow, she is hot, wow, he's cute, or... I thank I, God he did not watch my season <laughs> If uh, I did, I would have been like, wow, she is 16. And creepy. <laughs> no, I met her as a 22-year-old. Okay, that's better. I and did it, watch his season, though, and I did think he was good-looking. but had I, the long hair. And, I did. But I didn't meet him until I was, thank goodness, in my 20s and mid-20s, and you were... In your mid twenties. Yes. And uh, yeah, so we were able to meet as adults, not as my sixteen-year-old <laughs> self. Thank the Lord. No, it was uh, it was perfect, and we got to meet after the trials and tribulations. It was like we both been in the industry for a little bit, we understood it a lot more, and then we got to meet each other and kind of set our own grounding for business to come. Yeah, it was kind of like, you know, finding somebody you're like, oh my gosh, you went to the same college as me, how did we never meet? But it's, you have all, you know, such a history that's similar, but you get to create new memories together. Which is all next year, it's going to be the two of us, our wiener dog, <laughs> and a long road ahead of us. For the whole year, we're going to be touring on Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I'm Joseph, Diana is the narrator. She has to work harder than I do, but uh, we're, we're both going to be working our butt off. It's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. How is it having someone else that's in the industry and kind of understands, and especially working on the same project together? It's great. It's it's really hard when, uh, you know, we both had dated people outside of the industry, and it's hard to understand the hours. It's not, we don't go home at 5 o'clock. Like, it's a 24-7, 60, you know, 365 days a year kind of job. And when you do get a day off, you just usually want to sleep and not move. And uh, being able to work together has been quite the blessing, and we have a really great time doing it. Well, unlike a lot of other people in the industry, we're not competition for each other. So it's awesome to be able to support each other, knowing what we're going into. I mean, truthfully, it's it's amazing for me to just be able to write a song for Diana, with Diana, yeah. knowing who, who she's going to have to sing before or after when she's doing a big performance. And, and we really want the song to mean something more to her than anybody else, because if it means something to her, then it goes out to the world. So we're just full support. Are you guys uh, thinking about getting back into making an album? Are you guys, because I know you guys are going to be doing Broadway for a long time and then we travel. Are. We're we actually are making an album when we get back from Christmas, in between Christmas and New Year's. We're back in the studio. Uh, we're We've making, already written the songs. Yeah. We're actually recording all the vocals when we get back, and we're going to put out a, an album that people can purchase while we're actually on the road so mm -hmm. they get a little bit of us. You know, you're getting the characters on stage, but you're going to actually get original songs that we wrote and produced, and you'll get a little bit of us when you leave, and you'll know what's to come. And it'll be on after. iTunes for those of you who can't unfortunately make the tour. We understand, but... I don't. <laughs> uh, do you still talk to Fantasia? I know you guys were in the finals there. You guys got to talk. You know, time time is a funny thing. It takes you far, and, you know, it's crazy to think it's been 10 years since uh, our finale at Idol, so we haven't kept in touch as much as I wish. The but last time we actually ran into Fantasia was the night I surprised Diana and proposed on yeah, the finale. Yeah, we, we saw each other. We talked on the, carpet, yeah, on the we, carpet. We said our hellos, and she gave Diana a big yeah. hug. And then lastly, obviously, where were you guys when you heard the news about Paul Walker? Obviously, it really hit a lot of people so hard. We were home. We were home um, and watching TV. my family's TV. in yeah. Santa Clarita. Uh, one of one of my, my cousin's husbands works for, he's one of the heads for the fire department. The other one's a police officer. Yeah. So they were all around it. And it's uh, it was just a shock. You know, it, for someone to be involved in so many manly things, like cars and all that, to actually go out in a car accident, you're like, okay, that makes sense. But he wasn't driving. He, he had no control of the situation. And it's just heartbreaking that... If he were driving, it probably wouldn't have even been a thought. It wouldn't have even come up. So uh, it's, it's a tragedy. It's just, it's it is. It's, it's hard to, to lose anyone at such a young age. And you know, he was such a beloved um, actor. And I know, I know his his family meant a lot to him, which I respected. And yeah, I definitely. We were sitting on the couch and just kind of sat there in shock. And I thought somebody was playing a hoax online. And yeah, we and saw then, the, we saw the post that they actually the other cast members of Fast and the Furious put up where they had the Thanksgiving Day picture and they posted it out as a Facebook yeah. post with Paul holding hands and they were given a blessing. And it was just, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. You know, and then for them to say Santa Clarita, it's, that's a 25-minute drive. Yeah. You know, I thought, I definitely thought it was a joke. So, just really enjoy your time here, because mm -hmm. you know, everybody's going to go at some point. Yeah. So, uh, make sure when you go, you have at least achieved what you, what you wanted to have your statement be here on the earth. Yeah. All right, well, thank you guys so much. I knew you have to go. You're performing tonight. We can't wait. Oh, we have to go. go. So, I'm sorry, but have a great night. Definitely. Thank you.